the way I think about it in the business world is that hard work has very little to do with effectiveness. The grocery store owner or the person working at a restaurant might work 60, 80 hours a week, and that might be all Elon Musk is working. But Elon's making a lot more money because of his specific knowledge, knowledge that cannot be taught, but can be learned on the job if you have a strong enough desire. Because Elon is doing the right things, he is far more effective in earning power. And the right things, at least in business, can't be taught because it's a moving target. You can only give very vague principles that inspire people to head in the right direction, but I can't teach you how to make money or trade the stock market. It's like when people ask you for stock tips. No one who's any good at stock trading gives actionable investment advice in a public forum because all the details are too hard to convey. I can always tell people who ask for stock tips, they're not really serious about investing. People who ask for book recommendations aren't really serious about reading. People who ask, what business should I build, aren't really serious about entrepreneurship. People who say, what career path should I take, they're not really serious about their career. When someone's asking for a how-to in anything, they aren't actually that serious about it. If they were truly serious about it, they would figure it out. But then that leaves the paradoxical question, well, how do I figure it out? Take the person who, quote, made it and became world-class in whatever he did. If he went back and retraced his steps and did everything again the same way, but this time he did it by mimicking himself, he would fail. Even he wouldn't be able to do it. What has to be understood is that where greatness comes from, it's a very murky affair. It is nonlinear. It is unpredictable. Perhaps nature and the universe set it up this way, that you have to jump in. And once you jump in the soup and you're being bombarded through all sides and you live in confusion and you have no idea which way is up, if the obsession is there, then what happens is through some messy process, you find a way. You see light at the end of the tunnel. You forge a path through the jungle. That was not done according to a how. You were flailing the entire time. So there was no how to flail. When you come out through the tunnel and someone asks you how you did it, you have no idea. The thing that's almost laughable is when you ask a great athlete, can you show me how you did that? They won't come on and say, I have no idea. They will provide you with some semblance of an answer, which is a non-answer. And what they will do is, because there's a gun pointed to their head and their back's against a wall, they will create the highlights. When the human being who watches that follows the highlights, he misses. And the reason that he misses is because it's all the small things. I can't watch Roger Federer play tennis and swing the racket the same way, nor will any description from him on how to swing the racket get me to swing it the right way. Then we go to intellectual efforts. We start asking Warren Buffett why he invested in a company. And there he can try and create a mental construct as to how he thinks and how he invests in the company. But there are just as many details to Warren Buffett's activities when he decides what to invest in and how he lives his life and how he thinks as there are to Roger Federer's body running around a tennis court hitting a ball. The details are not transmissible. They're not copyable. You can be inspired to try it yourself, but without that sincerity, that obsession, you won't get there. Not only are the details not transmissible, the details are not even knowable. Ah, so Warren and Roger don't even know it themselves. Absolutely not. No great artist knows. The things that you do greatest are the things that you know not how you do them. I would argue that you're not even there when you do them. You're not consciously thinking about it. I find that when I'm speaking, I do best when I'm not thinking about what I'm going to say, and I don't even hear what I'm going to say until it comes out of my mouth. You become as surprised as the audience as to what you're going to say. That is just pure. What does pure mean? Pure is not morality and pure is not good. There's no good and bad. And that's a whole other topic itself. That's actually the next topic I want to get into. That's another set of assumptions that everybody has that to understand you have to be left by the wayside. What we're doing here is we're trying to focus on what is true. And that means we're going to speak as honestly as possible, which means we're going to be vulnerable which means we're going to say things that are socially unacceptable, and we're going to say things that are potentially surprising. And it's very difficult to speak truth in a public forum. And why is that? Because there's an internal dialogue which says that a person wants the audience to understand. There's definitely that. There's also a piece of it that society is a set of collective lies that we all believe in so we can get along. 
it allows us to establish lowest common denominator consensus so we don't all kill each other and we can cooperate. But there are these shared fictions that we have to maintain for that society to function, which is fine. There's a cost to that, and the cost is borne by the individual. It all comes back to DNA, not genetic DNA. DNA in one's sensibility is the way that he is wired. And for some people's DNA, what society thinks is almost an insult. If we don't discuss truth here, then what's the point of having a conversation? If there's any compulsion that the audience should understand, and it doesn't mean that I go out of my way to try to be arcane and abstract, but it isn't about anyone understanding. It's about speaking